so today um, I am talking about throat work and um, third eye work. I want to also add that I mentioned yesterday, you know, when we're doing the work of our emotions and everything. A lot of people like the word play. We're, we're playing. We're doing the, uh, we're playing with. We're doing the work or we're learning how to play. So we're playing with, we're exploring, we're experimenting, and that's all part of it. So um, the, the main information, the throat, the third eye, what am I talking about here? So in, um, in Judaism, I mean, a lot of people are familiar with the chakras or with the spherot of, uh, you know, energy centers, this wheel. Sphera means like sphere, like circle, and or like um, orbit almost, and then... Chakra means like wheel, so they're very similar. And this idea that in they have different kind of constructs. So we'll say that for chakras, you have in the middle line, you have seven locations. In Jewish Kabbalah, they sort of fit on what you would call the das line. Like the das line is like the central line. It comes from Keter, the crown, the light, the original light of the self, um, of the beingness, and then of light, life, you know, source where there's an endless sort of quality because it's like constantly coming in, coming into being, coming into existence. And it kind of comes down through this Das line. Das line comes from our wisdom or the side that gets the light and then the side that fleshes it out. Makes It's like you get the dot and then you draw with the dot. You end up with a whole diagram or a whole... Oh, it's falling off, sorry. Um, oh, well. Um, so basically we have... a. Uh, um, I don't want to call it meridian, but we have this like tube almost. And, and it's like, that's what, when we think of our spine, that's what we think of it. And there's many symbols for this. There's like this idea that, um, you know, there's energy like coiling up. There's this idea that like, it's, uh, there's top down, bottom up, and this is the channel. And of course, like in this case, I'm saying for if we're looking at the sphere out the Kabbalah, we have a uh, das is kind of this additional secret portal and it could be used for good or bad. That's why we know the tree of knowledge of good and evil. We also have the tree of life. This is the tree of life that we're connecting through when we talk about um, our awareness and our insight rather than, um, you know, sort of like a. Uh, So kind of like when you imagine, so tree of life, meaning it's, it's growing, it's growing and it doesn't need to know yet versus tree of, life, of knowledge of good and evil. It knows it's bad or it knows it's good. That's also a stopping of growth. So that's really what we're looking at here. We're looking at, are we connected to like good and bad or growth? So if we're looking at Das and we, we go down a little bit, we're going to come to the heart center space. Um, as a chakra, you have just one main um, area up here, which has like upper, lower, and then three below. And then you have in, um, they're all main, I mean, but like that correspond with the sphero. Sphero, you just have one main area here and then another one to, uh, by the groin. But this could be divided in because you have many more lower sphero, not lower, but like sphero on the body that correspond in lower places. So what, what how can we connect this? And in the sphero, we know that the feet connect with the throat or the mouth and the expression center. So we walk the talk, we talk the walk, and our malchus, our divinity, is our, we could speak things into being. We can speak out loud and it affects our surrounding. We know a butterfly effect, the sound waves of my voice traveling don't just hit the curtain or don't just hit the window. They go on into the universe. And we know that, that God spoke things into being and we know that sound waves m matter so much and have very high powerful effects because they're literally physical vibrations and we also know that colors have been studied to be in certain very high frequencies of uh, patterns that are also sounds so as the sound speeds up and speeds up and speeds up on its own pattern like let's see you have a or b or c or d and we know we we hear of these as keys or um you know a minor or ever, most people are familiar anyway these correspond to colors the uh when they speed up speed up so first the frequency of the sound right and then you have it 
like so fast that you can't eat, it's no longer a sound, it becomes possibly a color. And we know that when the Jews received the Torah, they heard, they heard, they saw sound. So it could be that in this way, the Sfirot kind of um, collapsed into itself in such a way that they, that time, you know, orbit really means that something's kind of uh, in a perpetual falling. So they kind of collapsed in instead of falling and suddenly they were in the space that comes before the frequency has sped up into a color or they could hear the colors, they could see the sounds, you know, um, that idea. So that's something interesting um, to point in. And this is very powerful because we're talking here about our throat center. We've covered a little bit of this in a previous video. A lot of what I'm drawing on here is from Liz Simpson's book um, called something about the chakras, right? Like uh, I mentioned this before. So, but we're not only focusing on bringing in clearly predominantly Kabbalic, Kabbalistic, um, mystical kind of teaching. So now that we've established this Das, which is this third eye, um, it sort of comes into being from the, the dot and the line, and then it could be, make something 3D. And we have, and, and it's interesting we say 3D because we have two and then third, and then it's, it's Das, it's dimensional. Das also means like a union, a knowing. You become transformed by the information. It becomes one with you, right? What consumes you, you consume, and what you consume, consumes you. And what you obsess about is like what's taking up the space in your mind. And what you, so in other words, what, let's say I'm thinking about a person, they're taking up space in my mind, right? So this is becoming um, my mind. They are, they are becoming my thoughts. So obviously as we move into, um, you know, when we speak and when we think, there's a bridge here. There's a bridge here between our, our sight and our, and our speech. And we also hear from this place. This is, it's, it's interesting. We also, um, this connection space here, we also can, can uh, when we see color, we're clearly hearing color also, right? Because I mentioned about the frequencies. So we can see sound and um, we translate it into, I like this, I don't like this, good and bad. Okay, now we're going to get into this. I know that was a very long introduction, but... Uh, So first of all, Liz Freeman or Liz Simpson? I thought her name is Liz Simpson. Okay, so first of all, we have some affirmations. I'm starting to speak up for myself. What I have to say is worth listening to. I'm starting to speak up for myself. What I have to say is worth listening to. I delight in my self-expression and in all my creative pursuits. I listen to and acknowledge the needs and wants of others. I delight in my self-expression and all my creative pursuits. I listen to and acknowledge the needs and wants of others. I always speak from the heart. My voice is becoming stronger and more compelling. I always speak from the heart and my voice is becoming stronger and more compelling. My thoughts and speech are considered before I utter them. My thoughts and speech are considered before I utter them. And now we ask questions. And I wrote this within the last one to two years, but you can... Um, do this at any point and even revisit. So first of all, how can I strengthen my voice? I learned I can rest it, practice silence more, speak in a low voice, take deep breaths, do vocal exercises. And have soothing drinks, etc. Does my posture constrict my voice? I can free up my neck and shoulders, my throat and upper back area through breath work and heart opening exercises, core exercises to give space for the sound, right? To reverberate inside of me. How can I express my feelings? I can practice dance moves or choose songs to practice, drumming, martial arts for beginners, and even a sensual kind of like performance style quality. How do I feel about expressing anger? I have an overwhelming need sometimes to prevent any loudness or aggression that signals I'm out of control to myself or others, but I can learn to de-escalate. How purified is my body? I... Okay, this is interesting. I wrote, I've been good about not ingesting milk. No, this is not the case. I currently now eat cheese and dairy. 
to, I mean, I eat dairy, including cheese and milk. And then I wrote, but tobacco feels impure. Now, I don't smoke tobacco anymore. It says, as does scrolling on social media. And I've um, very heavily cut down just because of many reasons, not necessarily super intentionally, but I did have the conscious intention as well to stop uh, just mindlessly scrolling. I've been busy. Um, and then eating refined flour. Now, actually, it was a Passover holiday recently, and I didn't miss bread. I didn't miss cake. What I missed was pasta. And for the last few days, I've been eating pasta about once a day. I don't know what are the effects of this. I do it with some sauce and some cheese. And I wrote, eventually I can face meat too. And this is because I was vegan for many years, a vegetarian, and you know, one or the other or whatever. And it still lives with me. Now, I already bought some burger meat. I was gonna make two burgers for the Sabbath. So I am not, right now, stopping to face meat. But clearly there's a part of me that is still sort of thinking that it would be better to not eat meat. It's worth exploring, you know, and it's like what I, the reason I hear I talked about consumption is because we speak with the same, with the same mouth that eats and drinks and smokes, you know, and I mentioned in my previous video about, you know, Shvat, Aquarius, right? Or maybe it was a couple of videos ago. The reason I didn't really give the background, but the reason that it's relevant is because every two weeks for, um, I don't know what's up with this top that keeps falling off. Every two weeks from Tubishvat, I mentioned Tubishvat is the birthday of the trees, Two weeks later, we have Rosh Chodesh Adar. Two weeks later is Purim. Rosh Chodesh means a new month. Adar is the next month. Then Purim. Purim is the holiday. Um, we're basically um, a miraculous story with a heroine um, named Esther. And you can look it up, or I've probably had it in some of my videos. Um, and then two weeks later, we have Rosh Chodesh Nisan. And this is um, the month of the liberation. And the princes bringing offerings. And then two weeks later, we have Passover which is the holiday of redemption. Two weeks later, which just happened, and I mentioned this, is Rosh Chodesh Iyar. Then in two weeks, we have Pesach Sheni, which is the second Pesach. You get a second chance. The same way we could use our words to say, I'm sorry. Or after we have a fight, we say, I made a mistake, or I don't want to hurt you. Let me try again. The same voice, right? They asked for another chance. They said we were impure. Why could they not bring the offerings at the time of Passover? It was because they were impure from helping somebody who had passed away to be buried and the impurity of death prevented them from being allowed to give the offering. Then we have two, two weeks later, Rosh Chodesh Sivan. Rosh Chodesh, each of the time I say Rosh Chodesh, I mean the new moon, the new month. And each one has a different energy portal. And it's actually like a holiday, especially for women. And then we have two weeks later, we have Shavuot. Shavuot is the holiday where we receive the Torah. It's the end of seven weeks of preparation. Where fine, we were redeemed on Passover. But seven weeks later, the second day of Passover till Shavuot, we are preparing each of these firot and all the combinations of. So like today is Teferis and Teferis, the balance of balances, beauty of beauties, harmony of harmony. That's what is today. Compassion of compassion. The day that I'm recording this video on Friday before Sabbath, um, you know, I think it's May 10. Um, it's Bay's ER, second day of ER, the Jewish, the Jewish month of ER, which is also used to be referred to in the Bible as, Bible as Ziv which means radiance, it's a month of healing. Um, and then um, basically we are clearing and cleaning and, and refining and purifying really all of these centers. And when we accept that there's no space or time in spirituality or you know, also called metaphysics, people who study quantum physics, um, um, quantum mechanics, we can have virtual particles borrow a charge from a potential future self, which they then can return upon the union with the source of the charge that is eventual. Let me put this in relevant terms. We can borrow from our future self the re reassurance and the quality of light that can help us now. For example, if you are going to become a millionaire in one year, you can borrow $100 from your future self. It's like nothing to your future self, but it makes a difference to you today. So that's the idea. We can actually... Um, virtual particles borrow how are they why are they called virtual because they don't actually exist they're a piece of the future self coming they do exist what i mean is that they're a picture piece of the future particle here now and then return they borrow a charge the charge makes them come into existence as positive or negative because they're in resistance they have an edge right there's edge which they then return to the union it's like they collapse into their self when when they return into their future self which is a neutral charge or a positive charge or a negative charge, whatever it is. And this is how we can understand no space, no time. And idea that I mentioned before, when the Jews received the Torah and heard the sounds and saw the, the and, and saw the sounds and heard the sight, right? 
Um, and as we learn to accept ourselves, we each one individually, I'll speak in I. As I learn to accept myself, I have to accept how in survival mode, I may not be who I want to be. And, you know, or feel that I need to be. And that gap is where I can bar the light of the bigger picture. The future me that already learned the skill that's emotionally more mature, that is a more healed version. And I can show up as that future self even here now to practice, to practice, right? Because there's memory in the virtual particles clearly, to go back to something. And there's memory in us that our future can come back here now. It's part of who we are. We carry this version. And I'm not even going into the idea that time might be flowing backwards. Our experience of time is that everything to come is actually us moving backwards. And we, um, everything that feels like the past was actually um, new. And now we're, we're, we are rewinding. There are some that say quantum physics and, and, and um, the reason we're experiencing this is because we are re being rewound. Everything that already occurred was the potential. It was like collapsing back into itself. It was like our future self's virtual particle is now returning back to its source. So it went backwards and then went back forwards, in other words. I'm not even going to go there today. Um, I think we have to stop here, but I look forward to continuing this topic, the third eye work. It's just a little bit more than I have time for now to, to continue with because um, I had a very long introduction, but hopefully we'll just flow right in when I do the, the next video, and hopefully I won't have a top that keeps uh, falling off. All right, have a blessed Shabbos, and be well. Bye.